Good morning, afternoon, or evening, as the case may be in your area. For those that do not know me, I am Zen Archer. Wait a minute. No, I'm not Zen Archer. You're Good Zen. morning. This is the TDD report for January 18th. the 18th. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. This is my show. That's right. This I is think my show. But uh, for those of you that do not know I'm in the moto vlogging community, as far as classic vloggers, which I call them, which are the people that just turn on a camera and are able to just talk off the cuff, uh, he is one of the well-known YouTubers, and he has come, and he's a guest at my house during he's the... saying I'm a blabbermouth is yeah. what he's trying to tell you. you it's true. Do you want to share what the reason is you're in Chicago for a small period of time? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, a, a television production company from the UK, from London, uh, saw a video that I did about the uh, blue-green algae blooms in Lake Erie in 2011. And uh, as a result, they wanted to use the video, and they wanted to interview me about my experience and finding it and stuff like that. So they flew me here to Chicago, and uh, we filmed for a couple of hours. And then I thought, well, as long as I was in Chicago, I'd stop by and see Suburban Rider. So catch that on the Weather Channel. There will be a special coming up on Weather Channel, and I will probably eight win. episodes. Yeah, you'll be sending me a copy of the DVD of his part on it, Absolutely. and I will also put that on. Uh, if I'm allowed permission, I'll have to see from the Weather Channel. But um, for fair use, I will use at least a small amount of it and point to it. We'll find a way for you guys to see it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll work it out. So first up, this comes from my buddy 1954 Shadow. I don't know if you know him. Do you know Bob? How, Bob uh, 1954 Shadow. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not sure. Well, anyway, he sends me a lot of material, and this is about, this is musical, too, so this would be something of interest to you. A scientist says that he can pop a pill, that you can pop a pill and be able to develop perfect pitch. Now, what he did was he uh, did a study where he took a bunch of people that had never had any kind of musical formal training, these were adults, and they used a drug called, and I'm not familiar with this myself, but I guess it's a drug used in uh, people that have a certain type of problem called valproic acid and allows the brain to become more plastic and absorb new information. And after giving this drug to these people and putting them through training, quite a few of them were able to develop perfect pitch. That's where you can actually play a note on a piano and the person can identify that note with no reference. Um, they claim that Ella Fitzgerald had that talent too, that she would actually tune up the band herself. She would have them play the notes and they say, either it's in tune or it's not. So uh, yeah, uh, typically before the age of seven is when you develop that kind of talent and they say there's never been a recorded instance of an older adult all of a sudden acquiring perfect pitch. So I thought that was kind of cool. This is, a, this is on NPR radio and there's about a four minute audio bit and as usual all the links to everything will be down below in the description. So if you want to find out a little bit more about it and listen to the four minute audio. Um, also, getting on to Consumer Electronics Show that I talked to you about last week. Now, it's been over for a while now, but there's still a little bit more coming out about it. I talked about a device called the Oculus Rift. Remember the device that you kind of clamped onto your face, and I thought it was kind of a little bit weird, but it put you into a 3D immersion world, like a, a spherical area. Well, as usual, my TDD report also depends on people participating, and... Hairbear 31 d in the comments left a really good comment that I want to share with you guys. And this is somebody that's more familiar with gaming than I am. So I would take what I said with a grain of salt compared to what he has to say. And I'm going to read his comment verbatim from last week's video. The Oculus Rift can run on most popular games already and more are coming out at all the time for the Unity engine. And the Unity engine is just one of the newest game engines that they are using to demo. It's one of these devices you have to try fully to understand how awesome it is and once you do you'll be handing them your wallet and saying can I have one now please the immersion is totally worth having a pair of goggles strapped to your face plus it's still in prototype phase the consumer model will be a lot smaller and sleeker so in his mind and by what he's talking about here he's a little bit more along in the gaming world than I am so take what I said with a grain of salt and if any of you guys ever are listening to anything on the TDD report that you can add to that you have more information than I do Please share it. As you know, in the past, I was one of the people, along with Stephen Hawking, that said they were not going to be able to find the Higgs boson particle. Well, you know, me and him were both on the losing side. It cost mm -hmm. him money, but I didn't put any money forward to it. And uh, one of the worst gadgets on CES, and I'd like to get your take on this, then if you get, this is the worst gadgets of ZDS. Somebody came up with a uh, communicating by the Internet crockpot, a crockpot that actually talks to you. Now, this is what the guy gives on this article. It, it's a whole bunch of stuff. It sounds he, like a crock. Yeah. On the CES, he said the worst of CES as far as gadgets, people, and things that annoyed him on the CES. But this crockpot thing, it just made me laugh because he said, this is like trying to make a smart whoopee cushion. He said, it's dumb. It's supposed to be dumb. 
He's like, how can you mess up a crock pot? There's only one way. You don't plug it in. I mean, there is. There's so little that can go right. <laughs> yeah. If, the only other way that I could think of is you mess it up is you plug it in and you come back four or five days later and it just evaporates and becomes a brick. So, yeah, for some reason they want you to uh, get all engaged at the CES on a smart crock pot that actually talks to you through the Internet. There's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. When I was coming here, uh, yeah. uh, I was on track nine and they, mm -hmm. they have a a audible sound saying track nine track nine track nine i'm like just say it once yeah. and all it does is repeat it it doesn't give any other extra information no seems silly hmm. and this is from a, a person that we both know too his name is dylan this is on facebook too and i told him i was going to use this it's a uh, revolutionary scuba mac mask that creates breathable oxygen underwater. Uh, I know you probably have, and I've heard of artificial gills before. Um, this is using a slightly different technique, though. What he uses is these kind of fibers that have microscopic holes that supposedly will not allow the liquid water to pass, but any of the free oxygen that's around in the air will be able to pass into this mask. I'll put a picture of it up um, as I'm talking about it right now. It does look kind of like what, uh, what what it makes me think of is remember the movie Thunderball with James Bond, mm -hmm. where he had that little breathing apparatus mm -hmm. with the two little tanks, and it was about Batman this, like, and Robin had those. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's like, uh, that was fake too, I mean, obviously, and believe it or not, at the, in the Thunderball movie, I heard that um, some scientists were actually um, getting in touch with the producers of that movie saying, how did you develop that underwater? And it's not real, <laughs> the guy was holding his breath. But uh, even this too, I will, if you look at the comments, and one of the links I'm going to give you too, you will look at some of the comments too, and the uh, people that are into diving and know what they're talking about, they're very skeptical about this too, because evidently the only thing this scientist really has come up with is just the fibers with the breathable pores, but from that he created a prototype, and this is a non-working prototype, I'd call it maybe a, a proof of concept thing as you'll see in the photo that I show you guys, but it does look really cool, but he's also talking about that they have to come up with a battery that's 30 times as powerful to run a compressor that's 30 times as powerful to be able to force the oxygen through these pores to use it as a breathing apparatus. So don't look at this as being something that you can buy anytime in the near future, and by the time it even becomes workable, it may not look like this, but um, mostly just for the cool factor, I'm thinking. Yeah, you're going to have to find some way to separate the hydrogen from the oxygen in order to get uh, you know, anything well, that's breathable. That's the other thing, too. Some of the people in the comments mistakenly um, looked at the design of it, and they thought it was actually electrolysis. It's not electrolysis. It's actually the same thing that fish do with the gills. It's actually taking the free oxygen in the water out. It's not breaking the molecular bonds between the hydrogen and oxygen. Huh. That takes a lot more energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fish do not breathe by... Uh, uh, breaking the bond between hydrogen and oxygen, just the oxygen that's actually just in the water. Pulls the extra oxygen out. That's why you have to actually, in an okay. aquarium, you have to actually pump the air into the water to get more free O2 yeah. that's dissolved in the water itself. No, fish cannot uh, do, uh, what do you call it, uh, hydrolysis. Yeah. Well, <laughs> give it another week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> so anyway, I really want to thank uh, Zen Archer for coming and uh, being my guest here on the show and everything. And uh, It has been a pleasure. You guys take, week, take care this week, and I will catch you next week. And be well.